Hey everyone, my name is Esther and in this video I'm going to talk you through step by step how to sew up the Lowland Kids overalls. They are a super cute style and there are a few variations that you can choose. Um, these are the overalls here. As you can see, super super cute. I have chosen to do the shorty version. So a high cut short. But you can also do a longer short or even a full length, um, sort of like a legging style with this same pattern. I've also chosen to do the knotted fronts. They're adjustable that way, but you can also do buttons if you prefer. And you can also do a variation that's included with this pattern um, to do buttons on the back. Um, and change up a few details like that. Here in Australia, we're going into summer, so I wanted to choose quite a lightweight fabric. I've chosen this really, really cute lightweight jersey, and I have lined it with a plain white jersey there. But you can choose a slightly heavier fabric, like a jersey slub, or even, I reckon like a French terry would also work. You could attempt a fleece, um, lots of um, options there for fabric choice. There are very clear instructions to follow when you purchase the pattern. My little bub is about to turn one, so I decided to sew the 12 to 18 month size. It's hard to judge how big or small this is um, on camera, but there are very clear instructions for which size you'd like to select and there are options for adjusting the length or changing, um, you know, being in between sizes and that kind of thing. I did want these to be slightly oversized for my bub. So since she's just turning, she's going to turn one soon, like oh, a whole year's past. Um, <laughs> I was hoping that these would be a little bit baggier, a little bit loose fitting. Um, she does run hot as well. So I wanted to choose a cotton that was very, very breathable. Australian summer can be brutal. So I hope that these are, I'm sure these will be comfortable and just a really easy staple for her to throw on um, in the coming months. Otherwise, let's get started. So I've clicked through my email link, which has taken me to this page where I can download the instructions and download the pattern that I need to print out. So this is a quick run through of the instructions. Like I said, I'm making the shorty version with the little knots at the front. It's got a good list of all the things that you'll need, printing instructions that you can follow. If you've never printed a pattern before, just follow those step by step and you will end up with pieces like this. You have the option of printing it um, a, I think it's A0 size as well, but unless you have an A0 printer, you'll have to go and get that printed. So um, these are the ones that I printed from my home printer. They're just A4 size and they're numbered very clearly. So then you just lay them out like so. And then I only trim the parts that need to actually be stuck together as pattern pieces. So that might save you a bit of time rather than having to cut around every single piece of paper. Just lay them out first and see which pattern pieces actually need to be stuck together first. Then I used the markings to align all of the pattern pieces and then use sticky tape to stick them together. Once they were all stuck together, then I simply used scissors to cut around each pattern piece. All the pattern pieces already have seam allowance, so unless you're planning to add extra seam allowance or something like that, or making a alteration to the pattern, then you don't need to worry about seam allowance. Just follow the instructions on how much has been um, included in the pattern piece. Once I have all of my final pattern pieces, I checked them against the instructions, which clearly show you what pattern pieces you need for which style. Um, I actually intended to go with the full length um, leg, like the full length, <laughs> the full length leg <laughs> for this overall style. But then I realized the fabric that I intended to use um, was not long enough. So I went back to the drawing board and cut them off to do the shorty instead. If you can't decide what variation or which pattern to go with, jump onto the website because there are so many pictures on cute little bodies and you can see how the different styles look. Um, and so that's what I did before I decided to do the shorty version. So like I said, I just trimmed off the leg part um, along the curved line where it was shown on the pattern and I'm going to keep that piece because um, later on if I decide to do a full length overall I'll still have that piece and I'll just tack it back on. Okay so now I finally have 
all of my pattern pieces, I'm going to get started on cutting. Do be careful if you're using pins because you can uh, make little holes in the fabric which are obviously not great for the final product. So you can use sewing clips but out of habit I always use pins and I just try to use a few here and there. But anyway, the cutting instructions are on each pattern piece so whether you need one or two or a pair they're all on each pattern piece so just follow the, those instructions. Um, here you can see I've got my facings in the white jersey, I've got my shoulder straps, there are two pairs of those, I've got one front and one back, and then I've got the two little bands that go around each leg. Because I'm using a stretchy fabric, I'm going to need to use a stretchy stitch, and so for me I'm going to use my overlocker. If you don't have an overlocker, you can use a zigzag stitch on a, no on a normal sewing machine. Um, you can find lots of tutorials on how to do that. Um, but otherwise, make sure that you do a test run with your fabric and check that your seams are looking very nice and neat before you start sewing the real thing. So to get started, all my fabrics are right sides together. I'm going to sew down both side seams of my facing, both side seams of my body piece, and then I'm going to sew the crotch of the body piece and the two sides of my leg ribbing pieces. So those are folded over and then I'm just going to sew down the side. I'm also going to sew down the straps, sew down two of those long edges and one of the short edges, leaving one of them open so that you can flip it out the right way. I try not to go back and forth to my machine too many times, so that's why I'm going to sew all these things up all in one go while I'm sitting at the machine. Then I clip all my pieces apart, uh, trim all the little tails off and move on to the next step. I flip the facing the right way out and then surge around the raw edge that's around the hem just to stop it from curling too much. That's an optional step, but it could be nice to make it sit a bit better. And then I also flip the shoulder straps the right way out and I fold over the leg opening pieces. So these are essentially gonna be little ribbing sort of cuff pieces that go around the leg openings. Um, you fold them in half like this and then we're going to pin them to the inside of each leg opening and I'll show you how to serge them to finish them really beautifully. I've folded my cuff in half and I'm going to use a pin to mark that halfway point. Not essential but it might help with spacing out the ribbing on the short opening. This is the part where we're going to join it to. So with your overall pieces still inside out, open up the leg opening like this and then place your ribbing piece on the inside of that opening. So the right sides of the ribbing should be against the right side of your overall piece. And the cuff should sit inside the hole very neatly, just like this. I've popped a pin in to hold it in place, and then we're going to serge all around the outside. There should be three layers that you're serging all together. Once you've serged around the outside, it should look something like this. I usually align the seam of the binding with the seam of the crotch, so on the inner part of the leg so that it's more hidden rather than having that seam on the outside. They should look nice and neat so we can move on to finishing the straps and the upper part of the overalls. I'm going to keep the overalls inside out and just fold down the front piece so that you have access to the back. And I'm going to take my lining piece or my facing piece, which I have already turned the right way out so that when I tuck it inside the overalls like this, the right sides of the fabric are together. Now with the facing in place, I can also fold down the back facing, which will expose the back overall piece so that I can put my straps in. Leave about a quarter of an inch on the sides of the straps and align them nice and flush to the top of the overalls. That's so that when we sew down the sides, your straps can flip out easily without being caught in the seam allowance. Now you can tuck your straps in like this and pop your back facing in place over the top, pin everything so that we're ready to sew. One more step before we start sewing, we're going to fuse the top of the front of the overalls. So the fronts, which are going to have buttonholes, um, need to be reinforced with some interfacing. I'm using these two squares, which I'm going to fuse to the wrong side of the fabric so that you can't see it from the outside. 
In hindsight, I would have actually used a strip of interfacing and ironed that all across the top instead of using two squares. Now I'm going to serge straight across the top and then I'm also going to serge all around the outside joining the overalls to the lining. So it's around the armholes, across the back of the overalls and then back up through the other armhole. Now we're nearly done, um, flip them out the right way and just tuck the facing inside the overalls so that they're sitting nice and flat inside the garment. Um, use your fingers to press the edges and make sure that all of your corners are turned out, especially around the front and along the armholes, along those curves. And then just use an iron and press everything down really nice and neatly. Since I'm using a jersey and I thought that if I pop things in the wash um, it might warp a little, um, I didn't want to risk the lining poking out and being able to see that when the garment's being worn. So I decided to do an edge stitch, um, oh not an edge stitch, I forget what it's called. Mm, uh, doesn't matter what it's called. <laughs> so basically I'm going to get in between the lining and the main into that seam and I'm going to push the seam allowance towards the lining side and then I'm going to stitch along that edge just on the lining. So not on the main fabric, on the lining fabric only. That's going to make sure that the lining stays more towards the inside of the garment, especially when it's being worn. It's too tricky to try and get all the way up into that corner. So I'm just going to start a little bit further down the armhole. It's not going to make a big difference because you can't see it from the outside anyway. Um, and I'm just going to use a normal straight stitch for this because it doesn't need to be stretched. This is what it looks like when it's done. So nice and neat. Can't see it from the outside, but on the inside, it's just a plain straight stitch. I'm also going to tack the lining to the main fabric so that again it doesn't flip out when it's being worn or even through the wash. So I'm going to match up the side seams like this and then I'm actually going to sew in the ditch. So I'm going to sew on top of that seam that's already there so that the stitches are not visible at all. The final step is to do the buttonholes. So this will vary greatly depending on your machine. So I strongly suggest that you go back to your instruction manual um, and look up specifically how to use the buttonhole machine on your sewing machine because it will probably be different to mine. I made my buttonholes about three quarters of an inch in length in size um, and I sort of just chose where I thought was a good spot to put them on the overalls. I didn't want them to be too close to the edges of the fabric but I strongly suggest that you use chalk or some sort of erasable marker to clearly mark where you want your buttonholes to be so that they're symmetrical on both sides. Not like mine. To make sure I don't cut my buttonholes too large, I saw this neat little hack on Instagram where you use pins to mark the very top and the very bottom part of the buttonhole. So then you can cut open your buttonhole without the fear of going too far and ruining the whole thing. To use the buttonhole, you just thread through your shoulder straps and then tie a neat little knot. Um, of course this makes them adjustable so you might want to do that once you've popped the overalls on your little one and of course if you prefer actual buttons you can sew them onto your straps. Um, I would suggest popping them on your bub and then uh, marking the spot uh, so that you know where to sew the button so that it fits them best. And voila! The overalls are complete. I should add that I decided to put Bub in just the overalls to kind of showcase them, um, whereas usually you would probably put a t-shirt or a long sleeve underneath and layer these over the top. Um, if you did want to wear these just the overalls by themselves, you could very easily raise the armhole a little bit so that it doesn't scoop quite low. And also keep in mind that I chose to um, sort of size up for my Bub because I really wanted to, it to be a bit more of an oversized fit. So that could be also why it was a little bit longer in length. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful for you. Leave a comment if there are any things that I, any things? <laughs> Leave a comment if there's anything I missed out, anything that could be more clear for you and we will do our best to answer those in the comments below. Um, otherwise, you can also find Lowland Kids on Instagram. Um, they have so many inspiration photos for you. Once you get started on these overalls, it's really easy to want to just sew up another 10 pairs. <laughs> um, or that could just be me.
You can usually find me on my own YouTube channel called Slow Living, slow with an E, um, and I think we'll be able to link that below so that you can follow for any of those tutorials, completely different, um, but if you're into sewing or upcycling, uh, thrifting and that kind of thing, I try my best to upload videos there, even though now I have a little one and it's really, really hard but I'm sure a lot of you can relate. In the meantime, I'll have a few more videos on the way with Lowland Kids and I can't wait to get started on those since this was such a success. If you have any suggestions for patterns that you would love to see me sew up next, leave that in the comments as well. Again, I hope that this video was helpful for you and I will see you again soon.